So my name is Helen. I manage the animal care team at Dairy NZ and sit on the Wintering Action Group. Um, I've wintered dairy cows in Canterbury, been a shepherdess in the UK in the Falkland Islands, uh, where in the Falklands we break fed some of the first Swede crops in peat of a pH of four, where the gumboot test was uh, very much are they on or are they off. Uh, where it was so boggy, we regularly lost machinery and livestock. Between practical stints, I have worked with all species helping farmers consider improving animal welfare in whatever the hot topic is. This has included uh, some years in the pig industry where I actually persuaded farmers to make mud for their sows to wallow in. So um, it's a funny old world. When you think you have everything sorted in terms of farm management, it's very hard to think differently or recognize gaps that might need to be improved. One way of thinking differently might be to imagine if one of your animals was sat at the table having their say about what they wanted over winter. Livestock should be a factor in our decision making because of it's, as experienced farmers, we understand how life is for them in our wintering systems. If you take nothing else from my part, then just thinking about what your stock might ask for during winter is one key takeaway message. As Olivia said, last year there were photos taken of wintering practices that highlighted to the minister the conditions some animals were experiencing. This prompted the minister to form a group to provide some advice around improving our wintering practices. There were seven main animal care factors that came out as recommendations from the task force. Today, I will highlight three of these. These are the three that farmers I spoke to thought were the most common challenges. We have 44 days until the 1st of June. So what can we do between now and then with so many other farm jobs to do and current COVID related issues? So we'll look at some of the smallest steps we can take to ensure we address these risks of any of these task force challenges occurring on farm and provide our stock with the best winter experience we can. For what we typically think as an adverse event, such as a snowstorm, we need to think about our previous experiences. Our knowledge is based on our total sum of experiences, including our mistakes. When I was a shepherdess in the Falkland Islands, after coming from the flat south of England Downs farming, I had never experienced a snow smothering event. My knowledge increased steeply after losing tens of sheep. Being someone that is driven by animal care, for me to lose animals was a clear sign I had failed. So I took decisive action earlier in subsequent storms. I didn't want to feel that feeling of failure again. I was lucky enough to have control over what I did as a lone shepherdess, but in a family dynamic, it can be more challenging. When storms are brewing, what actions can you take to ensure the safety of animals? And have you communicated these ideas to your families or your farm teams? If we think about our cow around the table, she would say an extended period of two to three days, constant rain or very windy conditions is adverse to her. This brings us to the most challenging factor during our 60 days of winter, how do we try and achieve a comfortable lying surface in a crop paddock? Depending on your soil type, you may not have to do anything extra. The paddock may naturally provide drier areas that animals will use to sit down on. Most farmers we have spoken to fall into two camps, in paddock options to maintain a suitable lying surface or out of paddock options to produce, provide a suitable lying surface. We will be discussing these on an additional meeting nearer winter with a couple of farmers who adopt in and out of paddock options. In the next couple of weeks, can you self-identify as an in paddock or out of paddock kind of farmer? If you have previously done very little to address times when soil structure has collapsed into sludge for more than a few days, do you have any options out of paddock or would you see yourself more as an in paddock management option? In the additional meeting that Ashley and I will be running, um, we will um, look at more of the research that shows how strongly cows value lying down 
and how you can read the cows, the weather, and the paddock to triangulate your reason for making a decision to alter management. Birthing on mud affects the health of dam and offspring. And frankly, it's a frustration for the whole team. The first question here is what do you normally do? Is this an issue for you? Particularly if you're a grazier and the caretaker of other people's stock. Using timed pregnancy diagnosis data is useful here. Many farmers split mobs by calving date and also body condition score if you've got a big enough group. However, with feed shortages expected, will the body condition score of your herd be more variable than usual and therefore getting cows up to condition in the first half of winter will be the aim and therefore remobbing into calving date comes after. The reality is if you feed fodder bee and don't have pregnancy data, you will need to commit time to allow everyone in the team, including yourself, to pay attention to detail. This will mean, as a leader, you will need to bring the team together and go through how you will address this vigilance. We are all busy people. So what are the smallest things you can do around these three areas this week? Adverse weather. Maybe sit down with your family or your team and look how you dealt with the last big adverse event. Was it really stressful? What do you remember and what could you learn? Comfortable lying. The first step is to do a stock take of all your available options and decide if they are any improvement on a muddy paddock. If not, then within paddock is your most likely farm strategy. Next step, listen out for our animal care meeting or maybe even call your neighbor and ask them what they do. Birthing on crop. If you have timed pregnancy data, where is the data? If you don't have calving dates, what else can you do to ensure prompt drafting of cows? Was this method successful last year? Thanks for listening. I hope it has been of some use to consider the areas of risk and commit to one small action you can take in the next 44 days that may have a big flow on effect for animal care over winter. <laughs>